AMD loses big for the first time in a while. Microsoft really please wants you to use Edge and is this the RTX 4090 killer? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet this Thursday, May 4th, 2023, while you enjoy your breakfast. And one of the things that AMD is not enjoying is their numbers that they posted for Q1 of 2023, because their numbers have fallen by 65%, yielding the first loss for their numbers in quite some many quarters. So it's not terribly all bad news. They have seen a decrease in revenue about 9%. However, that's leading to their first $145 million loss, which is a decrease of 115% in profit year on year. This time last year, they were 16% profit. Now they are 3% loss on everything that's been going on. And a lot of that is because of their CPUs. Their revenue on CPUs is down to under a billion dollars for the quarter, whereas this time last year, they were at $2.1 billion, which has also led to them losing 23% on that because they've had to drop the price. This is really no surprise if you've been paying attention to what AMD did with Ryzen 7000. Not a whole lot of people wanted to pick that up in Q4. A lot of people wanted to wait until the X3D chips actually came out, which they didn't release the one that everybody wanted until April, which is Q2. And then they started exploding. So we'll obviously have to wait and see what the numbers are gonna look like when they get their Q2 earning report in about three months. But it's just very clear based Based on these numbers that Ryzen 7000 has been mostly just a non-starter for AMD when it comes to selling their CPUs. A lot of people wanted to stay on Ryzen 5000. They may have shot themselves in the foot by actually giving consumers so much value over the last few years that it's leading to some losses in this current quarter because people were just waiting for the X3D chips. If AMD had said, hey, we're not gonna release those for a whole year, just like they did with the Ryzen 5000 series. The 5800X3D didn't come out till way down the line. Maybe they would have sold a little bit better on Ryzen 7000, but they just created this weird environment where everybody knew what they wanted was coming and they we're just gonna wait for it. And so they're down $692 million in income and gross margin for that reason. But it does look like on the gaming sector when it comes to the console sales, as well as the GPU sales, they're doing roughly all right. $1.8 billion versus $1.9 billion, which AMD is saying is because channel sell through of the 6,000 and 7,000 series increased quarter on quarter and that they had strong 7,900 XTX sales. But additionally, we do know from Sony's numbers that the PlayStation 5 had had its best quarter ever. It was the best selling console in Q1 out of any console ever released. It had the most units sold and that's what AMD includes here. So I don't think their GPUs are as strong as we think they are. I think if the consoles are probably selling a lot better than AMD's kind of giving here. You can see down here, it says semi-custom revenue grew double digit percentage year on year, more than offset by lower gaming graphics revenue. They are not likely doing very well in the GPU department, which is why they've had to lower prices on RX. 6,000 AMD, just like for the consumer side of things, not doing very well, GPU struggling, CPU struggling, and they expect that they're gonna continue to struggle in Q2. They haven't really released anything super remarkable. The 7800X3D is great. I do think that a lot of people are gonna wanna pick that up, but it might not be enough to actually bring their revenue up a billion dollars. But AMD says that, hey, don't worry, because we care about AI. AI is very important to us, okay? NVIDIA may have gotten the jump because they saw AI coming, but now that it's here, AMD, we, we've got AI stuff coming too, saying that that's going to be their number one strategic priority. Also reminding people that the MI300 world's first integrated data center APU is still coming. Honestly, I completely forgot about this thing because AMD hasn't talked about it very much, but saying that they are really excited about the AI opportunity. They think that it is success for them to have a significant part in the AI overall opportunity. AI for us is broader than cloud. I mean, it also includes what we're doing in clients and embedded. So it looks like AMD is gonna focus on AI. They've got the MI300 APU coming. They've got bad prospects when it comes to just being in the gaming PC sector overall, which is due to high prices. It's due to not really having a clear communication or marketing strategy with, with regards to their CPUs or even their GPUs. The 7900 XT was always a baffling launch. It didn't make a ton of sense. Obviously the XTX is selling very well because it offers a ton of bang for buck compared to Nvidia. 
at the thousand dollar price point but we're left here as consumers wondering when are we going to get anything affordable which we'll talk about in a second after we talk about the fact that steam hardware survey has changed because the last report that we got was that the 3060 increased a ton to be over 10 percent of the users on steam turns out that was a fluke the 1650 is back to being the most popular gpu the 3060 should have never been at that top spot amd cpus are still increasing compared to intel's but those are likely if i had to guess going to be the ryzen 5000 series and not the 7000 series and i can guess that this gpu is not going to be very popular in steam hardware survey anytime soon the 4060 ti getting its first retail listing over at a russian retailer indicating that uh it's just as bad as we think it is they have the specs all of the pre-release specs of the palette cards that we've been hearing from video cards and the like it is just not as good i went on a whole brand about it yesterday two days ago i went on a whole brand about it two days ago go check that video out in case you want to know what i think about the 4060 ti spoiler not good things another spoiler reese didn't give us deals yesterday is he gonna give us deals today yo welcome back to ft deals bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet i spilled water on myself right before i started recording but it's all right because we're cool like that but speaking of cool things we have this kadir's atx tower tempered glass case with nine argb fans you can pick this up for only 109 dollars 99 cents making it 90 dollars and one cent off and the perfect thing to put in there's this Gigabyte Z590 Aorus Pro AX motherboard, which you can pick up for only $99.99, making it $190 off. But then the not so perfect fit for the try as you might, I mean, go ahead if that's your thing, but it's the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X. This 8 core AM5 CPU is going for only $327.99 with the included promo code, which brings your total off to $71.01, which is great because it comes bundled with Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is perfect for Star Wars Day. And that's it. Those are the deals. You can find these and more linked in the video description description down below but until next time i'm gonna hand you off back to brett for the rest of your hot news cheers thank you or thank you not reese which is exactly what people are saying to microsoft right now because in case you use edge as your default browser nothing's gonna change for you but if you use something else well everything's gonna change especially if you're choosing to pay microsoft which is the most baffling thing of all because they are going to override your browser choice in case you subscribe to office or microsoft 365 on a personal family plan browser links from Outlook and or Teams in the future will automatically open in Edge regardless of what your preset choice is. They're just gonna force you into their own ecosystem, which has a lot of people upset online. Let me know, does this bother you? Do you want them to overlook your preferences and just give you Edge all of the time? Which is clearly the strategy that Microsoft is betting on right now. They believe heavily in the Bing AI situation they got going on, so they want more people to use it. And so they're going back to forcing it down your throat which never turned out poorly for them in the past. But now let's get back to AMD. This is a very AMD heavy focused episode because that's where a lot of the details came out. So one of the things that AMD talked about was their 7000 series mobile processors because those are still nowhere to be found whatsoever. So they talked about their 7040U APU chips that are supposed to be coming out. They're supposed to be thin light. They're supposed to be speedy and they're supposed to beat Apple, but providing no proof because as you can see in this chart right here, AMD just gives nebulous numbers of application performance and that it beats the Apple M2 by 72% in multiprocessing and 14% in responsiveness and 5% in web browsing, 8% in image editing. We wouldn't accept this kind of benchmark chart if it was from Intel. AMD is doing some weird crap. Their marketing doesn't seem to be very clear. Their communication style doesn't be, seem to be very clear. My communication's going off because I'm talking about AMD. We don't have these chips yet. AMD announced these back in January, said that they would be releasing in March. Last I checked, it's May, and AMD is saying that they are starting to ship out to their companies in the coming weeks, not customers. You have to hold on to that just yet. So back in January, they said March. In March, they said April. In April, they said April. And now we're in May. And they're saying, eh, soon, soon. So it likely looks like they might be in customer hands by June. That's when you might be able to purchase them, at least a few models based on AMD's past mobile launches. I would guess that they're not gonna be shipping out in volume. So you're looking at likely August or September before you can get your hands on them. Just again, based on past launches by AMD. They always hype up their mobile sector at CES and then don't deliver on it. The Ryzen 6000 series, when it came to mobile, looked really good. And then they just didn't have the units out there. They just don't deliver on this the way that I want to. 
So they should be hitting e-tail and retail over the next several weeks, whatever that means. But also with that, Dr. Lisa Su promising that a mainstream GPU should be coming out before the end of the quarter, okay? So we should get that, saying that they're on track to expand their RDNA 3 GPU portfolio with the launch of new mainstream Radeon 7000 series GPUs this quarter. This goes in line with the fact that we're hearing that AMD should be announcing the RX 7600 XT right around Computex time. Maybe we might get a 7700, 7800 XT by the time June ends. It's not quite clear what their strategy is with that, but there was a new Rockham post that came out, which indicates that AMD has more GPUs up their sleeves. So this looks to be the full lineup of what AMD is launching. They posted this, they quickly retracted it, but people obviously got those details out before AMD could take them down. 7,500 XT, 7,600 XT, 7,700 XT, 7,800 XT. But the most important one, the top tier bad boys, the 7, 7950 XT and the 7950 XTX look like they should be hitting stores at some point. Now, this is not quite clear if it's going to be similar to what AMD did with the RX 6000 series, which made it so that the 50 series only had an increase in VRAM speed, which might work may not in order to get it up to the 4090 level, but it could potentially have some GPU core increases. We'll have to wait and see what AMD actually has, but the 7950 XTX is real. We don't know when it'll be hitting, hopefully sometime soon. I just, I want, if they could give it to us for like 1200 bucks and it beats the 4090, that'd be great. I'd love to see it. Or they just replace the 7900 XTX at $1,000 with the 7950 XTX and it beats the 4090. I would love to see that too. Additionally, we did get some leaked benchmarks of a 7800 XT in Geekbench, but don't trust these as far as that we can see that this is either number one fake or number two, uh, a very early pre-production unit because the 7800 XT barely ties the 6700 XT. So if you see these numbers floating out on the internet, maybe just take them with a massive grain of salt and take me with water would take me with a capybara or something. I don't know. This episode of Hot News is over. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news to close out your week tomorrow.